Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review on Forza 7 and there are certain vehicles, especially within the prototype classes I would say, that you never really know how well they're going to be represented on a game. On some games they might be brilliant, on other games not so much, and those cars tend to be the vehicles which at the same time are also easy to overlook because the cars that are usually good tend to stay good. Stuff like the Porsche 962 or the Mercedes Sauber C9, they've always been fast in a straight line in every Forza game. However, you then have others, some of which we've already discussed, like the Mazda Lola models, which vary quite a lot. On older Forza games, they are among the quickest prototypes in the game, but now they're not. They've been severely neutered compared to what they were before. Now this vehicle is one which I had measured expectations for. I didn't know exactly how good it would be in the world of Forza, because in real life this is a Le Mans winner, the Jaguar XJR9. It's a Group C racing machine, and of the Group C cars that are in the game, stuff like the Mazda 787B, the Peugeot 905, the Nissan R91CP, there are some great models in that category, even the two which we mentioned earlier from Porsche and Mercedes, it's a very competitive category. Now, a car like this, which is definitely historically significant, can still have a tendency to not be as used. It's not as much of an obvious choice. It could be easy, especially for younger drivers, to think of a Jaguar as being a bit of an old man's race car, rather than this fresh, powerful, extremely fast machine. But the reality is the XJR9 is a force to be reckoned with in the real world. And I think on Forza 7, they've done a pretty good job of representing this car and its ability. Because when I entered the vehicle, or when I entered owning the vehicle initially, I bought it for a discounted price from driving through career mode, and I knew that I was going to do a top speed tune for it, as I do for most of my prototypes, to A, find out how fast it is, and B, of course, to make some cash from the storefront. However, this was slower than I was expecting it to be, and also slower than I was hoping it would be. I really did think that this could be a genuine rival to the Porsche and the Mercedes in particular, or maybe just a little bit slower, maybe in the 250 mile per hour region. Unfortunately, it's not. It is slower than that. You're looking more around, I think it's 230, 235, if memory serves, something like that. So it's definitely not slow. It can quite easily beat the vast majority of newer prototypes, be it LMP1s or LMP900s. But at the same time, it's certainly not among the absolute fastest of Group C cars. However, there's one particular way that the XJR9 more than makes up for that, and it's not really a way that I expected it to. I assumed, going into this car, that the handling would be fairly consistent with what you'd assume a Group C car would have, because although they vary, they do tend to have similarities between them. They tend to be a little bit slipperier than LMP cars, modern ones, but at the same time have a lot more power than something like a 90s GT1 car. That's the kind of level that you expect from them and of them. This car though, although not as quick in a straight line as I was hoping, is so much better through the corners than I realistically expected it to be. Now of course, that will depend on the tuning, but with the tuning that I did to the car, it's incredible. I was running fully unrestricted power, and even with that, it barely even has the inclination to wheel spin. It actually feels very close to a formula car in terms of the sheer level of grip which this vehicle has. It certainly feels like it has a whole lot more downforce than something like a C9 or a 962, and it's easily on par with what you'd expect from something like a Mazda 787B or a Peugeot 905. And from a car which can easily be viewed as kind of an old-timers Lamar prototype, the old guy's car, or maybe just a collector's piece, it really is not that. If you pull out the XJR9 online, you can do some serious damage with this car, and not just on straight line tracks, but even on circuits which are more technical in nature and are more based around cornering and maintaining high average lap speeds and average lap times, for instance, over the course of an endurance race. Now, in terms of which one to buy, because there are two versions, one is a lot cheaper, but it also has a lower class, and that is this version. I don't own them both, so I can't definitively say which one is better, 
but the fact that this one is cheaper is certainly a point in its favour. It's a 650,000 credit machine, which again is very good for a Group C car, and it's even better when you get the 400 grand discount, but in terms of its spec sheet, you're already looking at good numbers, and that's another hallmark, really, of Group C cars. They tend to be a lot more powerful than most prototypes, at least if you don't count the hybrid system of the newer ones, and also, more often than not, lighter. This car is both of those things. 750 horsepower as standard, 610 pound-feet of torque, and it only weighs 881 kilos, which is even less than a Porsche 962, which is a pretty good level for this car to be running at, to say the least. The horsepower is over 850 per tonne, and that's before you've de-restricted it. And the class is even 981 in, of course, the P category. So overall, it's got a very strong spec sheet, and although the top speed is, I would say, probably the only disappointing thing, it's only disappointed to me, because I expected more of it. Overall, it's not really that disappointing because it's more than fast enough for most scenarios. The only track where I would avoid using this car would probably be the Le Mans, ironically, because when you're going up against cars of this vehicle's era, such as the C9, the 962, and maybe a couple of others, but those are definitely the two big dogs, it will struggle because you're looking at around a 20 to 30 mile per hour disadvantage over those kind of cars. Basically on every other track apart from the Le Mans though, this car is an absolute weapon. It's an essential Group C car I would say to buy on Forza 7 or if you get the chance to get it cheaper in the auction house or get a discount through career mode, whatever the case may be, it's definitely a car which I would recommend picking up. As I said, I don't own them both, so I'm not sure which one is the better car. I would assume the more expensive one, which has a higher class, but I can't say for sure. This one is the cheaper of the two, so that's a huge point in its favour. But either way, if you haven't tried the XJR9 before, I would urge you to give it a chance, because this car is truly incredible through corners. Not just in terms of how fast it can go, but also how fun it is and how forgiving it is to drive. But that's it for this pick overall. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.